Hi, I'm Richard Wood. I uh, am a councillor for Internet NZ, and when I was on staff at Internet NZ, I organised the first two of our uh, NetHui events. New Zealand gets the prize for the best name. I'm Marilyn Cade, and I act as the chief catalyst of IGF USA. Uh, Edmund Chung from Dot Asia. We serve as the secretariat for the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. Uh, we're also helping get the uh, Macau IGF uh, started. My name is Anna Olmos. I'm a researcher at the a PhD candidate at the University of Madrid, and I am with the Spanish IGF. Hi, Jeremy Blackman from the Alana and Madeline Foundation in Australia. I'm a cyber safety specialist and youth advocate uh, and also an AURGF ambassador. Uh, my name's Venetia Blackman. I'm actually from the Australian Taxation Office and I'm, I'm here um, as somewhat of an interloper, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, I'm Michael Rothert from Germany and the German IGF, and I don't see my colleague as being the host for the next Eurodic in 2014 in Berlin. I think I can also include the Eurodic part uh, on my, from my side. Hi, uh, my name is Breida Frias, and um, I am on behalf of the Spanish IGF as well. Uh, my name is uh, Hisham Abul Yazid. I'm uh, with the National Telecommunicator Authority of Egypt. We serve as the Secretariat of the Arab IGF. Thank you so much. I got one. <laughs> Great. Naturally, they just naturally head my way. What can I say? Cheryl Langdonor, uh, one of the organising committees of the Australian uh, IGF uh, members, second year running um, for that. Um, but I've been a founding member and continuing contributor to the APR regional IGF. Thank you to everyone. Um, um, I would like maybe, Cheryl, if you want to start, uh, we were trying to... Uh, identify which are the main takeaways uh, from this week and how do you think it is going to affect or influence your uh, national, regional IGF initiative? All right. Um, well, off the top of my head, first of all, I would suggest that I'm going back to the Australian IGF um, and, and our organising committee with a good sense of the amount of interaction and uh, local buy-in from uh, all parts of the necessary community to make a multi-stakeholder model work. Um, I obviously would like to identify um, some key parts of our community that would like, I think with our ambassador program now up and running and having been successful, we may target that um, into particular sectors next time. So we pick up on, on some of uh, those in the remote and rural um, areas of interest, those uh, particularly I, I mentioned... Uh, um, business yesterday, or yes, it was only yesterday, um, that we at least had something for uh, start-up enterprises. I don't see that here. I think we would want to keep that. So I think it's more a compare and contrast of, of the types of um, themes and areas of interest we have identified already. Um, I would, uh, obviously, it would be remiss of me to, uh, to not say we all need to do a better job on the disability um, aspects. Um, but, uh, and, and this is not being glib, um, I would suggest whilst we don't think in the Australian um, AU IGF we've done a fantastic job of making it an absolutely accessible venue, um, I think international internet governance forum venues need to be looked at very seriously. <laughs> Yeah, um, obviously I'm not the person organising our next uh, <laughs> uh, NetHui event, but um, I think what, what this event has reinforced for me is uh, some, of the th some of the formats that we, we do use in New Zealand are, are, are good formats, particularly 
uh, the, ra the more round table type format that we're using right here today and that we use at a bigger scale at Netui and not, um, uh, and not so much of a panel type approach. Uh, when we do have panels as in when you've got a large room full of people and a panel up the front, but this, this smaller style panel approach that we're normally seeing in these rooms was not something that we tend to use a lot. The, um, the other thing was uh, the duplication of, of, of topics. Uh, with different communities, it seems to, to, to us to, to go against the idea of getting communities talking to each other, and, and so uh, it's not something that, that really forms a part of our, our event. I, I don't see, um, and I would actually go the other way and suggest that's something the IGF uh, could look at not doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and, and I think it's also um, something that I think it's worth mentioning about when we started the NetHui, we didn't, I, as, as the person who first organised it, I didn't have the benefit of having been to an IGF. Mm -hmm. So I didn't base it on the IGF uh, format. I wasn't constrained by seeing what the IGF was like. Uh, and I didn't know anyone who had been to an IGF. Mm -hmm. So uh, the format that we tended to start with was the <coughs> bar camp format of people in a room uh, discussing a topic. And then we added to that that the topics were predetermined in advance, as they are at, at the IGF, and ca came up with really a hybrid format that uh, I think is worth people considering as, a, as, as another way to go. So the IGF USA is, um, my name is Marilyn Cade, the IGF USA is very different, as I said yesterday, from um, all of the rest of the national and regional initiatives. We're highly politicized, and after this week's meeting, um, we came here. We have always come here with a uh, group of informal ambassadors who uh, um, in, um, have taken very seriously the responsibility to be workshop organizers, panelists, heavily engaged. And this year, we brought um, fewer people in that in that role, which was quite a disappointment. Um, but um, we also uh, had to postpone the IGF USA. It's scheduled for December the 12th. And because of what has happened here, and, and we've always had a big focus on uh, in strengthening and enhancing the IGF. So in the past, some of our sessions have actually been specifically about um, what's going on with the CSTD working group on improvements to the IGF was the uh, was one of our short topics where we did a three-hour session. It's always been very heavily focused on the IGF itself in terms of its governance and strengthening it and uh, building awareness about it. Because of what's happened here, uh, we will go back to have a highly politicized, highly polarized uh, IGF USA. And not because of the topics of the IGF, and not because of the surveillance topic, which we were uh, planning to address in the session we had to post, the day we had to postpone, but because of the approach that has been taken by uh, the ICANN CEO to uh, create a parallel universe. And um, so our goal is going to be, and particularly because the fact it's held in Washington, D.C., um, our goal is going to be, uh, you know, very difficult to try to make sure that we actually stay focused on the IGF and the purposes of the IGF. Um, so, so for me, you know, it's a very different world that I'm going back into. And I, maybe when we come back around, that would be a question to think about as well as, you know, what's happened here, because the surveillance topic tomorrow morning will also be something uh, that will be of high influence. In, uh, in our in our session, but we might come back around and think about you know. Um, okay, I've done one. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, Edmund Chung here. Um, so in terms of the APR IGF, uh, I explained. I guess it was probably yesterday. Um, the uh, the program. Uh, structure is is somewhat uh, modeled after the, the the global IGF, so th there's a significant uh, influence uh, of uh, of that, and also uh, there's also a, a I guess part of the reason is um, the multi-stakeholder steering group that that we 
uh, we have for for creating, I guess, curating the the program. A lot of them are on the mag as well, and you know that that contributes to it. Um, so, so one of the things is that, for example, in the in the last few years, it's been uh, those same uh, streams like openness, diversity. Um, it's like a test. I need to remember all these. Um, but but there was managing critical uh, internet resources previously. This year, we've sort of um, you know, the Mac have sort of taken that stream away. And the same similar, you, you see that being taken away from from the uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, regional IGF as well, and and added in the the multi-stakeholder approach um, uh, uh, stream. So so th so so the entire program is very much modeled after the uh, the the global IGF, and uh, we've seen actually a a good um, uh, a thing. Well, at least an emerging uh, trend out of this, and and we're sort of having a pre preparatory meetings. I, I mentioned it yesterday as well. Um, uh, we're seeing workshops that. That try to be uh, try to hold a preparatory session during the IPRIGF, and then you know they 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 can sort of gather additional information coming into to the global IGF. Um, as for the Macau uh, IGF, um, since this is his first year, and it took us quite a long time to convince the stakeholders that it's it's even relevant. Um, it, it's going to be one stream uh, conference. Uh, it's still going to be. Uh, the the spirit is still going to be multi uh, multi stakeholder, of course, uh, and cover a number of topics. But it's you know uh, it's too early to say you know how 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 they interact. It is an initiative in the formation. It is in 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 formation, but it was just confirmed last week. Um, so so the venues are set. The government has. Put in the money into the bank account so that things can actually move. Uh, unfortunately, it's very late. We're trying to invite some people there, but uh, the, the the problem is that we we had the venue and stuff uh, set up. It was November. It's going to be November seventh and eighth. So so those dates. Um, once the government confirms those dates, cannot change it again as well, <laughs> or it's going to take another. You know, I don't know how long to 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 get through the process. So, so that's uh, this, this is the first year. It's, uh, we're, we're we're hoping, you know, we're we're looking to get it um, done, and from there, hopefully, build uh, uh, a a a annual uh, initiative out of it. Well, first of all, it's a bit premature to say what we're going to take away from here, but uh, uh, some things come to mind. Um, first of all, there has been talk already, and uh, uh, not precisely, not necessarily inspired in the IGF, but in conversations that have taken place in the IGF, uh, looking at, uh, there has been a lot of talk on the role of government, and, and uh, we have somehow sensed it, uh, also because we've, t we've been speaking in the hallways with other Spanish stakeholders, that our government should also be more involved. And uh, 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 there has been a lot of talk of what multi-stakeholderism is and how it should work and whether the IGF should evolve and how does it uh, stay meaningful. And we, we sense that this is a transformation that needs to happen. The hype of building a multi-stakeholder dialogue already passed. Uh, the stakeholders are looking for more. They want to see what impact it can have. They are no longer comfortable with just going to what seems to be an event after all. Uh, I mean, once you've surpassed some of the uh, challenges, then uh, you start to get comfortable in it, and it's just uh, people, I don't know, they, they want something more out of it. And I think there has been a lot of talk about it here, which reinforces the feeling that we already had when we came here, and then it has you know, somehow facilitated or catalyzed some conversations of on, on what could happen in Spain. So we actually trying to imagine what the next phase looks like. I don't know if Raida wants to ask, add something now. Maybe um, what I don't know if we might consider is <clears throat> some kind of call for workshops, kind of like here, like at the IGF, since, <clears throat> I mean, we have working groups, but the topics are decided, like, so to say, in, in, in a meeting, in a, a global meeting. And then the working groups are established. So <clears throat> I don't know if we might. In, so we we have like two parallel sessions, uh, which are I would say equally weight. And yeah, maybe um, we 
could introduce some kind of changes, like so that um, workshops can be proposed um, so more more open. So to say, I don't know if I'm explaining myself, but. <laughs> So we do have a very transparent process, but it looks like it's always the same people proposing the same topics. <laughs> so uh, maybe we really should work out how to enhance this so as to open participation. I mean, it's open all the way, and it's transparent all the way, and it's broadcasted, well, you know, our means, webcasted. <laughs> but sometimes we get the feeling that it's the same people proposing the same topics all over, you know, always. Was that it? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with a lot of those points that have gone before, actually. I, I would want to concentrate on that idea of kind of duplication. Uh, uh, Jeremy Blackman speaking. Um, so from AUIGF. Uh, so that idea of duplication of topics, which is something the same, you know, that Dill's just mentioned about the same people coming together to, to nominate the same kinds of things. Um, for speaking from the point of view of the topics that as an ambassador, I brought to the AUIGF looking at youth internet issues uh, and kind of meaningful youth engagement and voice. Um, it has to be acknowledged that in Australia, at least, there's many, many, I guess those topics in regards to youth and the internet are discussed in other forums, primarily education uh, conference circuits, for example, um, and roundtables, et cetera, et cetera, uh, but also wellbeing forums. Um, but I think... You know, there have been a lot of learnings for me at the global IGF in terms of the value of having those issues at an IGF forum. And it's a question of, at the national level in Australia, of making the AU IGF um, the kind of foremost forum and, and it being recognised by those other stakeholders coming together. Uh, and I think it is important because it, um, the other issues that cross over... And, and in so many sessions that I've been to, it's been... It has come back to education on some level, you know, education about the internet, not just to do with youth particularly. So if I think about all those stakeholders in Australia who should be involved going forward in AUIGF, um, I think that's really, really important to make, to, to, you know, to really fly the flag for the IGF um, format and as a forum. So, uh, you know, really thinking up carefully about... Because um, it, it, does, it does bring a whole new lens... Um, that's much much more holistic. We're not just being stuck in an education sector or just stuck in a mental mental health sector. Can I just add to, a, can I just add to that point? There is that um, it's 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 really important that uh, that we don't have these sessions that are, are only for a community. That people feel that they can go to the sessions of the other communities. And that is where you get that crossover that, and the added, added value that they cannot get at their education conference or whatever other conference it is, is because they are interacting with the other communities at your, at your event. Yeah. Yeah, it's, been a, it's been a big microphone for some of those issues for that reason, I think. It's, yeah. it's brought in those other issues. Metaphorically, microphone. <laughs> Literally as well. Uh, Venetia Blackman speaking. Um, I was just going to make a comment. Uh, this is the first IGF that I've been to and I found it really interesting that within the, within the focus we use this word multi-stakeholder and uh, it's been used constantly over the last few days. And I think it, it's, I found it really interesting to me that Cheryl, as you were saying, um, the concept of business engagement in this forum is something that we need to explore further for future uh, events. I think there's I think there's more for us to unpack in that as well. Um, I haven't spoken to a teacher in the last few days. Where are the teachers? I'm sure I'm sure there are. There's three. Fantastic. We've got three teachers. Yeah. <laughs> so so I think we need to I think we need to look at those other stakeholder groups of the community and bring them into these forums so that we get that cross-pollination of ideas and concepts and that broadening of education so that they're going back out into their sectors with some new insight, with some new context, with some understanding of how these things link together 
and they'll continue to espouse those those, those concepts within their within their community as well. Um, <clears throat> Michael Rotter speaking for IGFD and uh, Eurodic. Um, takeaways here. I mean, uh, we already, uh, due to the fact that we are uh, um, running the Eurodic 2014, we postponed our national IGF and will do it as a, a wash up after um, the Eurodic. Uh, what is interesting uh, in this case is when, and uh, Marin, I, I uh, I know that you joined the, uh, uh, that you have been at the Fadi session just before. Um, it was interesting what Fadi said, but but also the uh, discussions about the Brazilian conference. This will definitely influence uh, the Eurodic 2014, and we already, uh, for whatever reasons, someone must have uh, had a, a, an idea. Uh, the motto we have uh, for for. The Eurodic is multi-stakeholder dialogue, a broken model or next-level democracy. Um, and this totally, perfectly fits in, into the current discussion with the Brazilian conference with what Fadi said. And uh, I mean, this is the major takeaway, the movement we currently have um, uh, with, within the IGF uh, taking place for, for many years, moving very slowly, and now it seems to be a very huge step uh, on its way within a very short time frame, uh, which might uh, come through the Brazilian conference. Who knows? But these are the major takeaways uh, for, for uh, Eurodic as well as for the German IGF. Um, my name is uh, Hisham. Uh, for the Arab IGF, I think uh, because of the way it was established, uh, it is anchored under the umbrella of the uh, League of Arab States and the UN ESQA. So uh, to a great extent, it follows the format and the way the global IGF is, is prepared. So we have the Arab MAG, which is a multi-stakeholder advisory group that, uh, that oversees and uh, sets the themes and main topics for uh, for the main sessions. Uh, we do put uh, calls for uh, workshops as well, so the workshops usually are based on those calls. Uh, uh, this year we have received uh, almost 40 proposals, uh, 39 exactly, uh, and we have selected 12 of them. We have made some merges and the usual work. Uh, for the takeaways, I think, uh, on the format side at least, uh, I think the roundtables, as, as some have mentioned, uh, they are more engaging than the, the traditional panels. They, and, and this we, we need to uh, try to introduce to the Arab IGF as well. Uh, also the flash sessions, and I think it was uh, initially by the uh, Eurodeck, uh, it, I, I think also we can, we can make use of this uh, formats in the, uh, in the Arab IGF. Uh, on the substance, um, most of my uh, my notes actually are mentioned some somewhere in the discussion, uh, but still I think I um, I captured the discussions around the principles on uh, internet governance, and I think this is something the RBIGF could uh, initiate as, as something for the, for the region. Uh, I have seen uh, many uh, um, uh, countries and many regions uh, have put some uh, set of principles, and I think we can. Uh, initiate this discussion since this is the only multi-stakeholder uh, forum in the region. Uh, we we also um, uh, one of the for me it's a, it's a very important takeaway uh, is also trying to trigger uh, new initiatives, national initiatives in the Arab region, uh, because of course multi-stakeholderism does not work. Uh, perfectly unless you have the full system at, at different levels. So we have started to see things developing. Uh, Tunisia now, uh, they have the uh, new national uh, IGF. Uh, our colleagues in uh, Oman are also contemplating uh, uh, a, a national IGF as well. So we, we, we will try to encourage uh, this trend and support uh, as much as we can. Um, the uh, 
the selection of the main topics for the main themes, uh, I, I still have the idea, and I, I, I took it also from last year's uh, discussions, uh, the possibility to make surveys, public surveys, and see what topics matters most to the communities, uh, instead of just uh, having the mag, uh, no matter how multi-stakeholder they are, they are, sometimes they are the same people also uh, suggesting the main same topics. So maybe we can uh, we can try to be more innovative in this. Um, another takeaway, and this is the last one, uh, because I have heard it from a lot of colleagues here. Uh, we need more discussions on the topics and less discussions on the processes. Uh, this is one thing actually that uh, the global IGF, uh, so sometimes it doesn't do enough. We, we discuss a lot on multi-stakeholderism and engagement, but uh, people are eager to discuss the actual issues other than the format we are discussing them in. That should be it. Christine, I think you, you might want to. Just, I'm going to do a break here on, on the right table to introduce the people that have uh, joined us in the last minutes. So, I just, uh, I think, uh, Subi. Sure, thank you. Um, my name is Subi Chaturvedi, and I teach communication and journalism and new media technology at the University of Delhi at a women's college, and we have an active women's development cell at the women's college. We're often accused of overstating our own case, but I don't think we can do that enough. Um, I also run a foundation called Media for Change, and I'm currently on the mag of the India IGF, which the Indian government has just initiated. Um, and there's a parallel process that we have, which is called the India Internet Governance Conference, and I serve on the mag as well, and, and the global mag. So there is a lot of um, learning, there's a lot of understanding, and my reason for being here is um, this is at the core of what I wish to take away from the IGF that, that, that is unfolding at the moment. There are many critical issues and there are many persistent and urgent problems that we seek to solve. But what this platform does is it gives me an opportunity to engage with all of you who are on the table. And I love the fact that this table is so intimate and so compact. I wish we had more people in the room, but, um, but that is, of course, something that we can resolve by disseminating everything that is happening. And all of us are circles that can influence more conversations when we go back home. But I do hope to see that we can institutionalize and link up with our different experiences and the problems that we hope and seek to solve. As far as um, the takeaways from here and how they're influencing the India experience, I, I will just comment briefly on that, Ricardo. Um, it, it is a country which is fascinating and, and a really interesting one at that. And when it comes to teachers and master trainers, um, there's a lot of onus and responsibility, fairly or unfairly, that's put together. And yes, there are same the, the same people, the same conversations that happen because even multi-stakeholderism privileges certain stakeholders. We've tried to examine this problem from several several aspects and of course there is the question of legitimacy of one stakeholder vis-a-vis -vis the other stakeholder there are voices that constantly get left out but what we try to do in terms of uh, the India experiment and it's a tough one because you can only do so much in terms of representation and participation but we put out an open call for the mag we also facilitated stakeholders from civil society and we made business contribute a certain amount of money and business let me add, did that voluntarily. Um, Virat is not here today, but he's led this entire movement right from the front. So you have one of the oldest uh, chambers of commerce, which is FIKI, contributing in pulling together civil society, industry, academia, media. On the MAG, for the first time, we had four young people, and media was a separate stakeholder community, not people who were observing, but they were actively participating. We had six panels proposed from the government, and they engaged and interacted. And as a result of that, 
The first IGF, the global IGF, was hosted in India in 2008, and then there was nothing. Um, and today, in the first half, we just ran almost a full session, um, and we were worried, skeptical, that we might not have enough people in the room. But this was an open forum that was proposed by the government of India, and you had people and officials sitting, running through the entire one and a half hours, responding to questions, and appreciating the energy and the fact that they're here and look, this is what we're missing. So I, I think it's 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 a constant effort to bring all the different stakeholders together on the same table. Um, and and a lot of problems I still believe can be solved at a local level. We don't have to very often borrow from the global conversation. But what what this has done for us is. Um, is is underscore the importance of multi-stakeholderism in more than... Uh, I, I can't emphasize that enough because there are a lot of decisions that were taken entirely by the government. So we're in the room and we're here to stay. I, 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 I won't unleash the tyranny of the mic any further and, and pass this around. Thank you. Uh, I'm Christina Agida from the Arab IGF, and um, I have actually nothing to add after uh, what my colleague Hishem has added, but I just wanted to say one thing that came today during the MAG meeting, and, uh, um, and, and maybe it's time to bring it to this table since it is so intimate. Uh, there was a discussion uh, why there is no, not much uh, input coming from the regionals into the, global, uh, into the main sessions. And I was thinking that maybe... Actually, I was inspired by the discussion we had in the, in the session of yesterday. We had, for example, someone from the Arab IGF participa participants come in and put some issues forward. So I thought that we need more of our participating, uh, um, not, not us as coordinators, but just the people that are participating in the regional IGFs come in and speak of their own experience within the main sessions that are taking place here at the Global IGF. I, th I think we're missing some of that. We should see how to channel that in. It's Marilyn, and I'm, I'm going to insist on responding to this. We were experimenting, right? Um, and I think it, it's premature to, um, because I think we should ask people um, why they, well, I know, and, and, I, and, 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 and I put out a call and ask um, for people from the IGF USA. They're very busy, and, you know, the answer I've, the answer I've gotten is two of the people who intended to participate remotely uh, ran into business crises back home. So I think before... Uh, before the mag starts judging, and, and no, 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 Christine, Lily, I, I, I want the mag to start listening to these people and us <laughs> instead of saying you need to do this, you need to do this. This was supposed to be an experiment, so why don't we add into our questions? Um, so we had these ideas. So let's ask at the end why didn't anybody volunteer? Because Ellen asked, and many of us made efforts to reach them, and then in our report, um, consider how feasible it is and see again next year if this is something that we should try. Yeah, no one suggested anything. It was actually me trying to analyze what is the issue, and I just felt from uh, what I sensed that we were sitting together as coordinates, which is a huge step forward. I sensed this year we have had a really... I mean, you've been there in last year. It was also very good the year before. But this year is really a breakthrough. I think it's very good. It's been well organized, well coordinated. But I think, I think we should find some channel. That's just a personal suggestion. We should find some channel for our uh, uh, stakeholders that were there. And some of them are present here. I mean, we have so many from the Arab IGF here. I know, I know. They just they don't have the courage to volunteer for something. So I don't know. Maybe we can have like one mi open microphone session for the people who participated in the regionals just to come and talk about things. I don't know. I'm just throwing in ideas. It's a good point, Christine. In, in, in fact, I encourage everyone to participate in, in tomorrow's uh, <coughs> mic open session, and it will be an excellent opportunity to, uh, to talk these this things and, and, and to raise your voices. I, I want just to finish the introduction of, of the people that uh, arrive later. Do you have uh, the mic? Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. My name is Wolf Ludwig. I'm representing uh, Eurodic here and uh, the Swiss IGF. 
uh, Michael uh, well explained the next challenges and next opportunities for Eurotic 2014 in uh, Berlin. So I do not have to add anything what Michael already well explained. Uh, I want to raise another point. Um, we had last spring the first Swiss IGF, which was a still a kind of a pilot project. Um, for a pilot project, it went quite well, but I have to admit uh, we had as usual the usual subjects only, suspects only, and um, not much more. We were missing all of the members of parliaments, and this is something uh, what, in my opinion, is one of the greatest lack, not only on the Swiss level, but on the European level. We had rather few members of the European Parliament in Lisbon at our last event. Uh, we have here in Bali one outgoing member of the German Parliament, no member of the Swiss Parliament, uh, very few members of any European Parliament. Uh, to make it brief, I think the political class in most of the European countries have not understood the message, have not understood the IGF, has, have not understood the next challenges. I was thinking in spring of this year when PRISM came up, that the revelations around PRISM would be kind of a wake-up call for the political elites in our countries, but I was wrong again. They are still sleeping, they still have not understood. It came out last night, uh, unveiled by a German news magazine, The Spiegel, that Angela Merkel, our newly elected chancellor, was spied out by... She said may. May have. <laughs> may, of course. Wow. Well... Marilyn, she, Marilyn, she is, as, uh, as you are, a n very nice and diplomatic person. Uh, I'm, I'm a journalist. I'm a little bit more strict. And uh, to the point, uh, I was sure uh, from the beginning that she was among uh, the victims of the spy outs, etc., and not the only one, uh, perhaps for the moment the most popular one. And uh, so, and I hope that this kind of revelation makes it clearer and clearer and clearer over the next time that all of us are concerned about internet governance and we can either feel ourselves as victims of the internet or as actors towards creating best conditions on the internet. And I think this is a very important point at the moment, a very important challenge. The uh, Montevideo Declaration, etc. There are so many things on the table and uh, I think we have a big chance ahead. Thanks. Um, hi everyone, my name is uh, Hanan Bujemi. I'm the manager of the uh, Internet Governance Program uh, for the MENA region with HIVOS. I'm a MAGNA member in the Arab IGF. Uh, I was responsible, f I was coordinating the openness session and the capacity building track. So I'm not sure what's the question, you know, that we should answer if you just... Uh, uh, well, mainly, you know, the um, issues, you know, that we can frame them according to the Arab region context. You know, all the discussion about NSA, you know, the surveillance, even though there was no kind of <laughs> much interest, you know, from the Arab region to uh, tackle this issue because apparently what the U.S. government is doing goes in line with the agenda of the Arab region. I mean, <laughs> they didn't really complain about that and there was no concern whatsoever about the privacy of people in the Arab region. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, well, it's a fact. Um, 
for me, I'm, I'm mostly interested in the human rights issues, so all the discussion that we had uh, regarding, you know, uh, how to frame freedom of expression. There was a lot of talk as well about privacy. You know, we are so concerned now with the privacy online that we might forget how to protect people offline, huh? Uh, because, you know, cybersecurity online is important, is a priority, but it doesn't have to happen at the expense of security of people on the ground. And I do work with activists. It can be very challenging, really, to uh, build capacity of these people. But then, you know, uh, they take a lot of risk, you know, in, in, you know, being engaged in similar activities. So for the Arab region, it's it's very specific. We we. I mean, I'm taking away with me a lot of, you know, um, uh, you know, talk that we had here, but I always have to customize it according to the Arab region. So that work has to be done. It's my homework, basically, that I take away with me, and I need to work on it. Um, I'm not sure if you, if you would like to have feedback about the Arab IGF, or you already had that in the previous two days. You were, you were fed, you know, about everything. I uh, can see Sham here, Christine, and I think Walid was here, you know, yesterday. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so my experience is a little more about uh, the national IGFs. Um, I haven't participated or organized the regional IGF. Um, but the regional IGF that is held in Asia-Pacific um, contrary to um, the expectation is perhaps amongst the smallest in terms of attendance. Um, I'm informed that in Tokyo two years ago, there were many rooms with more speakers than delegates. And um, it wasn't dramatically better th earlier this year when it was held in Seoul, Korea. I'm going by uh, the versions that have been given uh, by one of my colleagues at ISOC and another one at Facebook who attended this year. Um, <clears throat> uh, in addition to that, since this is a discussion on regional IGFs, I not, I just, I know, I just want to finish the part on regional IGFs. I mean, the thread is on regional IGFs. I can't, uh, it's not clear to us how regional IGFs are being awarded. What is the process through which a country or a region or you know, somebody gets the regional IGF. So I think we have a, uh, you know, I, I, I know that it's all very cool right now to talk about the whole happenings of the last four or five or six weeks or two months or whatever is going on, but I think we need to establish the IGFs as an institution and we shouldn't worry about the episodal importance of the discussion. Those will come in. You know, there's a lot more on surveillance this time. Next time could be somebody else, something else, and then so on and so forth. But I think our what we will really need to do is to establish the basic importance of IGF as a concept. And I, I can tell you for Asia at least that if 100 people are attending an IGF, which is a regional IGF, or which 50 were from Korea, then that's, you know, and then the organizing committee. So that means some 25 people traveled to that IGF. And that's uh, really not the numbers that we, for our for our national internet governance conference, which was a stepping stone to the IGF, which was not even the IGF, we had 400 people from including 12 countries and you know 40 speakers and 12 sessions and three days. And so I, I just want to you know on the that's what I want to highlight on the regional IGF. Uh, if I can very quickly talk about the national IGF, just so you know, the Indian government has now started the process. There is a MAG that has been set up. 35 uh, stakeholders have been invited, fairly evenly divided, and um, they hope to hold an IGF. They haven't had the first meeting yet. And so the effort that we had on already has been put on hold because you can't have a competing event. We don't want to have one because of the same stakeholders. And so we are quite happy that the government has taken lead based on the movement that we had started. And hopefully in the next year or so we will have the um, the IGF. But as, as I said, you know, in the in the opening, uh, in, the, in the previous meeting when we held, I think uh, we need to be very very clear for countries that are not the same old of the same old that these are the four things that you need to do to get the IGF off the ground, and that is three multi-stakeholder groups, a website. Um, there's a 
a, a report, and uh, we must clarify that the governments are neither required to initiate nor fund the IGFs, that you can start off on your own. Because if you don't do that, I want to caution you again and again, you will not go beyond 4045. Because everybody is then looking to the government, and there isn't enough either understanding or interest or motivation to do this. So if you want to really make this an, you know, a global movement, then we should be. And I think we have, we have to admit that we have failed in doing so. And we have failed our fellow citizens by not giving them clear directions on how we can move in. I'm going to close by repeating what I had heard from a 75-year-old lady from Ukraine at the last IGF who asked us for a tin plate for how to hold an IGF. I was watching this on a webcast and I choked because it seemed like we'd be repeating this, but I was wrong and she was right. Because unless countries such as those have a model, a tin plate, how to do this, they will never get it off the ground. So worry less about those who have it because we'll find a way to evolve it and improve it. Let's worry a lot about those who are not in the door yet. Just, uh, I think you, you two are are still missing the first uh, question. Thanks, uh, Laura Hutchison from UK IGF. Um, I've got a number of takeaways. Um, as a number of people have already said, the changing um, environment is going to affect the topics um, and how and how we discuss them going forward. Um, the participation of UK stakeholders in workshops will inform the discussions back in the UK um, and in Parliament. We've got an MP here and he's already flagged uh, that he wants to discuss cyber security um, in, in a parliamentary discussion. Um, as Alan already said, um, practical um, points in terms of workshop structure, roundtable discussions like this work really well. Um, I think that's a, a good takeaway um, for us. Um, I agree with the comments made um, on the sort of multi-stakeholder model and ensuring that you've got that broad base of support um, from all groups. Um, I think that's something that we need to, to make sure we're doing. I've um, got many learning points from the sessions that we've held here in the terms of the region, inter-regional and national dialogue. Um, I made some really useful contacts and I think it's a really good opportunity. It's a great first step and I think there's a really important um, opportunity here for cross-pollination of topics and discussions. We heard earlier in the week there's a lot of um, mirroring of um, issues and discussions. Lots of people are talking around the same topics. And I think it's important that we can share information between us. Um, and there's lots of ideas I want to steal. Um, like you're the uh, Australian ambassador program. Um, thanks. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Ellen Strickland, um, NetHui. Uh, I think for me, uh, while we wouldn't have so many sessions about multi-stakeholderism and the principles of IG, um, those have been outcomes for me about us thinking about how we do it, the practice, the link between those principles and definitions and practice um, will be quite important. Um, one of the things that's come out, I think, for us is about the transparency and in inputs to outputs and things that... Um, we could be even better about that and thinking about how we do it. Um, I think because of the changing sort of environment and the things that will be happening over the next year that are being discussed here, capacity building and broadening and deepening engagement with our communities um, will be quite important. Um, yeah, and I think, I think so. I think one of the things, um, actually yesterday's session, I didn't sort of get to share about sort of what's unique and one thing that we've done this year, which this is reinforced for me, works well, is we did away with having streams um, and just created, we call, well, they were like tags, like a, um, and, and what used to be streams were tags, and every session had to have at least two, sometimes three, so you're actually looking for topics to be cross-cutting, and we moved to two facilitators instead of one and looked for them to be from different communities and that they would work their networks to have different people in the room. And 
so it, what were streams were like, so sort of like how you'd have hashtag human rights in a tweet, we would have hashtag, act, well not hashtag, but access. So every session had a couple of tags so you knew what was going to be talked about instead of a stream. So flavors of the session, yeah, in a consistent manner. Um, and you're yeah, thinking about how to do that, but I think that cross that that cross discussion between groups is something the best sessions i've seen here you know you i look at the the panel or the speakers and see you know do we have different views you know people from really different perspectives and the the more different the better actually is what i've seen so oh i think edmund wanted to okay just like hold the mic okay passing the mic um i think i uh, just noticed the word that um Alan used there that we do, and it's the word communities, and that's when we're thinking of our stakeholder groups in New Zealand, we're, we're just thinking of communities. We don't use the word stakeholder groups when we're putting things together. I think it's really important to think about the words you're using. People don't think of themselves as coming from stakeholder groups. Uh, if they see a program full of stakeholder groups, they may not be very comfortable with that. Um, we also, it is one of the reasons, too, why we didn't use the words governance and forum in the name of our event. Uh, because those are words that basically potentially just put people off. Who wants to come to a governance conference? And Yeah, sure, the people who are the in people about internet governance, but if you're trying to get in a whole lot of other communities, then that's not a very good name. What did you call it? Called uh, me too. Too. It, it's actually the unique thing, which I've learned here. I haven't met any other initiative that has any a name that isn't something IGF, and do it. Because <laughs> it's about ownership, right? It's your community. So Hui, Hui is so New Zealand is a bicultural, bilingual country, and Hui is a Maori word for a meeting, but it has a certain kind of a participative way of being. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeremy Blackman uh, from AUIGF again. Uh, just fitting into that point, I'd, I will contradict it slightly in terms of what I'm seeing that when I mentioned bringing in the other stakeholders into the AUIGF, I think the global wins that we bring back in terms of what we've put forward, again, specifically in uh, youth issues, such as... Um, you know, we've been invited to fit into the ITU Charter of Human Rights from a youth perspective. Also, um, being inducted into the Dynamic Coalition of Child Safety Online will have a lot of legitimacy back in Australia. And so those stakeholders, thinking specifically of groups like the um, Australian Communications and Media Authority and those, those kind of big stakeholders, will see the impact that this is making on a global scale and will give it legitimacy at a, a national level, definitely. Uh, Gunnar Asbrink, um, Australian IGF ambassador. Um, just to add to that, um, when it talks about dynamic coalitions, I should also say accessibility and disability would would be very very valuable to have that um, um, cross connection. Okay. Um, so I think it's interesting. I, I just want to give my impressions. My, I'm Sophie Maddens. I'm from ISOC and working with uh, the regional bureaus. Obviously, the regional bureaus work um, with, some of, with and on some of the regional IGFs. So it's interesting for me to take back and to look at some of the impressions from this table and from the week as well. And I think you have some organizational issues, agenda setting issues, and takeaways. Um, I think on the organize I think some key points that I've taken from this table as well as no capture, no one organizer, the multi-stakeholder input into the agenda, and it's interesting for, for the takeaways to see uh, the comments made, uh, what's the impact for the next year as well, what's, what's the impact from, uh, from some of the discussions and what, what, what can be taken away from that. Um, coming, from, coming around the table, uh, for a second uh, question to put to this group, 
uh, looking, uh, discussing that, uh, I would like to see from the group, is this the type of discussion you would like to have in next year? Would you, li would you like this to be, um, to be included in next year's um, IGF as well, seeing what, what, what the relationship, what the, the takeaways can be for the regional IGFs from the, interna from the global IGFs? regional and national IGFs from the global IGF. So what can the takeaways be there? So we'd like to have um, uh, have your input for that, input to that to see will we organize it for next year as well. Um, hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Slava Cherkasov, and actually I'm from uh, New York United Nations uh, headquarter. And uh, I was even I'm Russian, but I was working for over 25 years at United Nations and uh, spent a lot of time in the developing world, you know, helping the developing countries for the future promotion. And right now I'm uh, um, from the. Um, New York in charge for the IGF Trust Fund. So actually, this is supporting of the IGF Secretariat and you know helping you know, f you know moving the uh, uh, IGF move forward. Uh, first of all, so that I really would like to express my sincere appreciation and, and admiration to all of you, because so that especially the you know that national and the regional IGFs, because from my you know experience. One of the key elements for the internet is to prevent him from fragmentation. This is, the, I believe, is one of the, our key direction to prevent IGF from the fragmentation. And you are in this front trenches, who just at the national level and the regional level is fighting in order to prevent this happen. And it's really so that I believe is extremely important, you know, that your contribution to this process to prevent the fragmentation of the internet. Uh, on the other hand, you see that if you look around in terms of the world map of the how many regional the national IGF does exist, and if you look especially from the perspective of the LCD, less developed countries, so we can see the huge, you know, the empty hole which does exist unfortunately at this time. And that's why I consider the trench line is broken in the number of the, you know, the directions. And I believe so that it's really important for the IGF community you know, that to fill this gap and to help you know, that these uh, countries, you know, that, and specifically LCD countries, you know, that to be heard and to participate and also so that to move forward with the, you know, with the national capacity building and uh, to be on the same equal level, because we are talking internet is equal to everybody, and so everybody has the equal access to internet. But what I believe so that it's time to move, you know, that from the slogan and from the words to the real actions. So that what I just want to you know that from my perspective, uh, you know, that we look from the areas of the United Nations and see what can be done and what can we do jointly with you and how we can move forward together. I know that, you see that we, I've been approached uh, several times or many times uh, some people from the developing countries, especially from the LCDs. You can see that we have actually no one from Africa. Yeah, very quickly. The, no, no, no. There's, there, there's, a, there's a competing uh, session that was supposed to have been scheduled at a different time. Okay, I'm very quickly. What I just... the Africans in it, so... No, 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 no. But what I'm saying so that... Uh, what I wanted to say that, um, and all of them, they ask very simple, like two questions. Why do I need my country IGF? What is my, what, what, what I really would like to benefit, you know, that, and how the country can benefit from this? And second one, how I can do it? What exactly to be done? And I know so that, that uh, Marilyn, so that she is going to take this tour, not tour, she is going to undertake the research and also so that to come up with a certain type of the guidelines. What I just wanted to ask you, you know, that please help her so that then based on, you know, that on the gathering of the knowledge, because you have the unique, really, you know, that accumulated knowledge. 
which we don't want to and cannot afford to lose, so that we have to preserve it and move forward. So that if based on, you know, that on this one we just delivered, it's again, it's not like a, it's a going to be like a, not model, it's like a framework. So that then the countries, yeah, that the countries who would like to do it where carry easily can, can, can get it, and so that see how it can be done based on your, you know, that on your experience, on your, on, you know, that on the everything that you are doing. And plus also so that ask you to help them as well. Second one, so that I heard about, so that this is very important that the voice of the regional and the national and the country IGF to be heard. So that I know, I know we have a number of the MAG members here, but what I would like to, you know, that to share with you if you don't know, so that actually MAG, it's a multi-stakeholder advisory group to the Secretary General, so that they have a certain type of the cycle, you know, that to the preparing the agenda for the global IGF. So that and the cycle started from February and it's finished by, month, uh, by May every year. So what my you know, that recommendation to you, please you know that try to send your message in terms of the, what is the agenda of the next global IGF, what you would like to be included. So that through the, you know, that either MAC members whom you are familiar with or even directly so that to the MAC meeting so that then, then MAC members can take it into consideration and, you know, that and reflect properly in the future agenda of the next global IGF so that then the, all these aspects to be included, to be taken into consideration and be heard and utilized. So this is what... And also, so the last, thing, the last thing which I wanted to also share with you and from my perspective, you see that I don't know whether do you have this uh, certain type of the coordination within the regional and the uh, national IGF themes for the forthcoming year. So I believe so that it's probably be more, I would say, efficient if, let's say, you know, that you come up with the overall idea, what is going to be discussed within the, what is the very important, you know, the discuss within the next year. Because you see that once you have very broad idea and very broad area, sometimes it's very difficult to get some, you know, some recommendation or something very concrete to be utilized. But if you're a little bit narrow, I'm not talking about everything, but if you're a little bit narrow, you know, that and have common feelings that this direction is extremely important and everybody will benefit from this. Again, it's, it's a bit of challenging, but at least, you know, that something that everybody can, you know, that drive and derive from this one movement so that everyone can you know, really benefit it. So in terms of this question, do we need such a regional meeting? I'm just raised two hands <laughs> and even my, my, my legs as well. I'm sure that I'm really happy that I was able, you know, that to attend your meeting and I'm extremely, extremely, you know, that be in favor of you to have this coordination meeting and even more so that maybe, you know, that through facilitate and invite the countries who would like to, you know, to set up the national or the regional IGFs and to participate and to attend your meetings, to learn from you. Also, maybe, you know, to have even additional exposure and outreach to invite them to facilitate and participate remotely. So there's someone who can really can go, so at least can benefit from the session. And then also so that share with the rest of the country saying, look, I heard, I understand, Let's go. Thank you very much for everything that you are doing. And as again, so that you are really, really strong, you know, that advocate for the internet government. Can, can I ask a question? I have a, sorry, I have a, first it was Sharon, I think it was going to, after that is Christine, uh, Virak, Edmund, Marvin. Yeah, I, I wanted to know. I wanted to know what the old uh, the new the numbers of national and regional IGFs. Um, definitely, the support of the IGF secretariat is important. So, are there restrictions or um, I don't know? Uh, because because we actually tried to see if it is. I know time is also not always uh, in favor, but sometimes it is important for the regional and the national IGFs, at least for the regionals, I'm sure, to have someone represented from the secretariat in the annual meeting. So, is there are, are there any restrictions or not really? No, there's only one restriction: money. <laughs> Based on the 
repository contribution. So it means that perhaps you know, there's some so, someone from the donor community who knows about this one. And unfortunately, we do not have such a strong, sustainable uh, financial component. So that given that we also try you know, that to utilize these scare resources also to get some uh, young professionals uh, from the especially developing countries, LCDs, less developed countries, so that to be able to be also trained you know, that during this IGF uh, secretariat so that they can come back to their countries and we can also use them as the uh, pioneers who just be able to start you know, the, the developing on the national and the regional IGF in the regions where we don't have such a strong presence. So that's why we really would like to send our, you know, that. but on the other hand, we also have some you know, recommendation from the, our top management saying that please, if it's internet, why don't you use, <laughs> safe, you know, that on the traveling and so try to, you know, use various type of the other ICT technologies. So I would just like to ask a point of clarification, it's Marilyn Cade. I think, Slava, what you were sort of saying is, um, because this meeting is not only for coordinators, um, and in fact, none of the meetings have been only for coordinators, but all of us suffer from um, the number of people who come from the national and regional initiatives are actually very heavily embedded in the rest of these programs. Um, and it's been kind of interesting that it's been only the, um, I mean, that's certainly what happened to the IGF USA, and then people got diverted by the purple elephant herd. Um, but my question to you was, it sounded like what you were saying is maybe we should have a special one-hour session for people who have the concept of an, a national or regional initiative in the information, in, in formation, um, which would be about information. <laughs> that was what I kind of thought you were saying, rather than that would be an additional thing. that would help the countries where they don't have the national or regional IGFs to learn from your experience and where they can easily you know that get it and then to understand but something in the simple as as you mentioned you know that they have a template but never been materialized because so that some of this template is just only taken from the textbooks not from the life so that this is what something that when I say once you just going to meet and meet with a number of the regional nation of IGFs, you have the fresh look. You just really see what is work, and then you also can share. Say, okay, from our experience, it'd be possible to be done. It's just we have a problem, so lessons learned, and how these lessons can be. This is what I'm just, I'm just sharing with you, so that that we've been approached many many times. You know, some countries say we wanted to do it, we excellent, so that we have an idea. So the to set up, but what is the mechanism? How we can do it? What kind of legal procedures and all of this stuff? And then you are just expert in this area, so that you can really make recommendation, and you can you know give this advice. Uh, can I just suggest and, and a template idea is great. Uh, to, uh, I think something that more immediately could be done that would be helpful to everyone in the room and to people planning things is simply setting up a mailing list. Um, a lot of these, there is one. Well, joining everyone up to it, yeah, and uh, yeah, and anyone who's who's wanting to start something can be simply added to that mailing list and can be starting asking questions straight away. So it, that was Richard Wood, is that right? Yes. For the for the transcript. Sure. And my name is Marilyn Cade for the transcript, and and and, and can I just say that you know there have been two um, um, in, initiatives in formation who have reached out to existing coordinators. One is the Persian um, IGF uh, initiative that some of us have met with. And um, I, just to reinforce the comment that James made, that the, you're actually helping to mentor um, uh, the Macau. I have a request and a question, which is, um, <clears throat> if we are going to do this, we should try it. This is Virat Bhatia for the, for the record. Uh, if you're going to do this, we should try and do this um, within the next two or three months to get the guidelines and a set of FAQs out no later than Jan because otherwise we'll hit the next IGF with the same 40 countries and one Persia. Let's not do that. Let's make it by Jan and then let's have 
20, 30 new countries come up before we get to the next IGF. Because the later we make it, the later in the year we lose time. That's one request for those who are going to finally put together, or all of us who are going to put together the guidelines officially, so that when somebody calls in, we convey, here is the FAQs, here is the guidelines, run with it. Uh, if you can't give them money, at least give them direction. The second question that I have is, there are regional IGFs, but there are regions and there are regions. I mean, Asia Pacific has sort of, you know, it's a bit of a region. So uh, we have not been able to succeed with the Asia Pacific IGF given the diverse interest in what's going on. Or so it's not that big right now. Hopefully, it'll become big. What is the, uh, what is the, is there a rule or a guideline to do a sub-regional IGF? For example, South Asia um, IGF would have 1.4. 8 billion people represented across seven countries. Um, would, would it make sense to have guys, a guys, regional, guys, sub-regional? It's Marilyn speaking again. Let's, be, let's think about this. Let's look at, and let me just clarify something. Some of you know that uh, Dima Epstein and I have been working on a study that will end up with some sort of examples of how what, who, what has been done, and our goal is to raise the money to do this study, at, um, to publish it by March, um, so it would look a little bit like Imagining the Internet, which is a study I did in 2009 with some of you and Diplo Foundation. But let me just talk about the, um, the, let's use Africa as an example, and I'm sorry that the Africans are not here, but in Africa, oh, there you are, sorry. <laughs> but well, well yeah, but guys, hold on. I'm not talking. I'm, I want to just talk about the continent for a minute as an example, yeah. okay? In Africa, there are sub-regional um, um, IGF initiatives like the East Africa, the Central Africa, the West Africa, and I'm looking at the two of you, and I don't actually think you're from that part of Africa. <laughs> and, and I know, I know. But then there also are national initiatives, and now there's a continent initiative. So, Virat, to your point, that there aren't any hard and fast rules. And, and we've always taken the position in the coordinators that it's that flexibility which is, should be celebrated. So there's nothing that would keep, there's no rule that would keep um, there from being um, Melons, uh, Virat again, for the record, some of us look for rules. So the fact that the West doesn't have rules and doesn't believe that without rules can happen is not how it works. Some countries follow rules, need guidelines. Please help them. We need to put some structure out. If you can form a regional IGF, we should state it. If sub-regional IGFs can be formed, that should be the part of the FAQs. The point I'm trying to make here is that if you make it clear and explicit of what can be done or the range of what is possible as a part of the FAQs, you will see this mushrooming very quickly. I can tell you this from our side. I have attended seven IGFs. I have held an initiative in India, perhaps the biggest national initiative, and we are constantly nervous about whether we are wrong or we are doing something off. We who have been in every IGF. So, so, it's, so it's Marilyn. My, my response is, I think the point is that's what we should be, that's the suggestion that we should be coming up with. But when I said there's no rules, I mean that it's not that the IGF sets it. It's that we make, the coordinators and interested parties make the recommendation. So Virat has made a, a recommendation. And it's this group and the rest of the coordinators that would... Uh, propose that. Great. I think the template is, is one of the suggestions about what else we can do. FAQs. Yeah, and FAQs. Um, do you have another idea of what else could be planned for the next IGF? Thank you. Thank you. Um, sure. Uh, just before we start getting ideas, just sources of funding. If you could just list down what are the traditional sources of funding that voluntary funding is allowed, that you don't have to have influence, that kind of stuff should be included so that people know those things. I'm, I'm going to jump in here. Cheryl Langdon off the transcript record. I'm one of the 19 or 20, was it, that filled out the form on behalf of the initiatives. 
um, and on the behalf of the Australian IGF, I refused to answer the question um, on uh, our specifics of our funding model. I'd be happy to answer proportional questions, but it is not for public scrutiny. So that's that's that. I'm no, very no, no, definite no, no, on that. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. So can I? So, well, funding models, those questions have actually been answered in the surveys and we should build on that, but don't expect too much detail because we've all, you know, a bunch I of us have filled I it out. Say that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say that. So let me clarify what I said. This is an FAQ about saying where can we find funding and you have to say you can find voluntary funding with businesses or governments or any other sources and this is how normal IGFs work. That's all. We're not, this is not about disclosure, this is about, yeah. Can, we, we are sole sources in some cases, and when we're sole sources, that's it. Um, I just wanted to briefly contextualize. In the context of even democracies like India, there are, um, and of course there are no blanket civil societies, so there are certain uh, parts who believe that processes like these should only be institutionalized and they should rest with the government. However, the IGF, since its core, has has believed that they should be bottoms up and they should have at least three multi-stakeholders. And that's all that we're saying, that it doesn't have to belong with anyone and it can be from voluntary funding from any source. So, so just this information helps a lot more people and I think that's the point that Virat was trying to make. Um, uh, and and I just had one suggestion. Um, there, there were uh, we have a lot to thank you for, by the way. But the fact that we are here, this wasn't an easy process. There were several calls and many calls, and we almost didn't get here. So thank you for the persistence, and thank you for facilitating a lot of people from developing countries to be able to ensure their participation in the meeting. Um, you're right when you say that there are a lot of coordinators here, and I, I started out by saying that we should have more people. One of the things that we do want to suggest is uh, maybe making a main focus session out of regional and national IGFs. I think we have to be in the big hall, in the main room, because there are a lot of people who come in and, and they want to know how is it that they can take away from this session and what is it that they can do back home and the learnings from those spaces. Also, we've just initiated this time a capacity building track and they're doing orientation sessions in the morning from 8 to 9, there are resource persons who are volunteering to lead these conversations. So maybe some of the IGF coordinators could also be there, uh, the one on access and diversity perhaps, and the one on multi-stakeholderism. That, that was a session we met just for new people, but the fact that they had questions and we could respond to them, uh, maybe a capacity building um, session or a, or a flash session on how we do it in our parts of the world. Just that. Thank you, Ricardo. This is Subhi Chaturvedi for the record. <laughs> Gone Elias Brink, AU IGF ambassador, um, Australian IGF ambassador to clarify. Um, just uh, for future planning um, when it comes to accessibility for people with disabilities, um, both physical venue and also electronic accessibility is something we all can consider. Uh, for example, this venue, um, you might not think about it, but it actually is pretty accessible. Uh, the front entrances, the lifts and so forth, and the toilets. And um, the hotel associated close by is reasonably accessible. Uh, we have we have um, the captioning service, which is really designed for people with hearing impairments, but we all use it to clarify points. It's not perfect. Uh, I mean, we can joke about some of the, um, of the, uh, the proper names and how they are portrayed, but it really is very helpful. So they are some of the accessible features, and there are others. Um, there's a dyna dynamic coalition on accessibility and disability that, that actually has worked very hard to ensure that the IGF uh, is, is as accessible as possible. 
uh, there's still some way to go when it comes to remote participation, and and there will be a presentation about that at the um, inclusion for all session at 11 o'clock tomorrow. So it's it's just a reminder that if we are going to be inclusive, that we consider some of these aspects uh, when we plan our national regional uh, IGFs. I think I was on a speaking list a while back. And um, <laughs> Marilyn can introduce me <laughs> if she uses the microphone and says who she is first. I'm Cheryl Langdonor for the record. And I am both keen to see this in answer to your question continue. I think we do need to have, um, whilst it will be open and inclusive and certainly able to be um, wandered in and out of, and uh, you know we have people who aren't organisers in this space, um, I do think we do need to have uh, the organisers of national, sub-regional and regional initiatives also have the opportunity to talk in public, in a forum if needs be. But the learnings that are going on here are very important. I'm unsure whether the going around in endless circles and crisscrossing is the ideal way. I think we lose some thematic debate um, and we might need to look at that. I, for example, would like to have challenged the concept of having 400 people in a national initiative um, being a particularly large weight over um, what we would expect, which is a reasonably high proportion of locals turning up wherever a regional one is. Um, that it's not all about travel. I mean, saying that you have 45 or 50 people from a given country um, turning up to a regional um, internet governance initiative and that somehow being a negative when you can look at it on the proportion of, of people that have come. You see what I mean? There's, there's all sorts of individual drill downs that we need to go through um, and, and perhaps what we need to do is set agendas at these types of meetings uh, and then continue some discussion points on agendas that run intersessionally. Um, because I, don't, I think this is too much work to be doing just when we gather together in the name of uh, especially once a year IGFs. So I think this is something that probably needs to be workshopped. It seems to me that there might be an advantage to a uh, for those that are involved in or aspiring to um, have national, regional, sub-regional or some other clustering and I'm not actually being flippant, um, small island development States are a natural cluster. Right? There are other clusterings out there um, that might uh, that might want to consider um, having uh, NetHui type styles or more uh, robust internet governance forum type structures. Um, that we might do even a half day workshop as a pre event. Um, it, it seems to me that our day zero this time was because we were getting it all sorted, but next time we could perhaps do it, and if we do do it, it needs to be a professionally facilitated workshop. And I wanted to give credit where credit's due to the ISOC workshop was looked at done. I am certainly going to steal shamelessly um, some of the fishbowl ideas into workshopping concepts for our future AUIGFs because it is actually theatre sports. You can, in fact, engage a larger number of people. I've always liked hypotheticals. I think that's a good tool. Uh, we haven't done hypotheticals in ours yet, but we certainly would like to. Um, and I think the fishbowl concept is another. So if we just start picking, cherry-picking the good ideas, but we need a repository, I respect the use of mail lists, but it doesn't help new kids in camp find out what's going on. We need to have some sort of repository as well. Yeah. That'll do for me. We have, we have. No, I just want to make just only one quick. Okay, okay. We have two minutes, but no, no, very quick. No, no. I wanted to, I wanted to bring to some, you know, that like proposal to you. You see that when we have this opening in the in the IGF, uh, the global one. We have this plenary session where we have a number of the you know, government, civil societies, uh, private sector. What I just want you to consider it, maybe for the next forthcoming idea, which is going to be next year, you as a group, I like, you know, in, you know to give someone. We did. We had a speaker on a high-level session. 
No, 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 high level session, right. I mean that someone who is, who is a... No, 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 I'm talking about the opening ceremony. Yeah, we did. You, you spoke on behalf of the regions? Yes. Sorry, I missed it. No, so that then what I'm... No, 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 I'm talking about this like representative of this group who share it. So that what I suggest we can preserve this and then for the future so that then the voice of the, of the national and regional uh, IGOs be heard on the equal level. Sorry for this one, I'm just... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. And uh, on that note, I'd just like to wrap up. I think there was a useful discussion on the takeaways of this IGF and useful discussion on the way forward. On the way forward, there are a number of issues, the format and the clustering, then the, template, the, the ask for a template or the proposal, the suggestion for a template or guidelines, as you say, for the new kids on the block, and indeed for others to cherry pick from the good ideas of others. Leveling up for next year, um, see if there can be capacity building uh, from, uh, for regional IGFs as well. Keep it inclusive. Share the learnings, but need more format, need more um, formalization maybe. And then also in the agenda setting, um, look at some of the organizational issues for the agenda setting. I wanted to talk a bit about the, uh, you talked also a bit about the template and the guidelines. Some issues to cover in the template and guidelines is the sourcing of, fu uh, of funding uh, or the funding principles. Um, and, and also recommendations um, on how to um, on on uh, on how to organize in the agenda setting of the of the uh, regional IGFs. So, is there some of the uh, some of the summary of some of the points in these on these two questions, or the last question in particular? And with that note, uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much for your participation during this this week to everyone and. Uh, enjoy tonight uh, gallery. Thank you. <laughs> and if you're in Asia Pacific Regional IGF planning, we've got a meeting. Let's go.